According to Thompson, we need to focus on whether or not someone has permission to use someone else's body. So in these cases of organ transplants and Henry Fonda and Chris Helmsworth putting their hand on your brow, you are in effect requesting to use the other person's body to save your life. So does the right to life give you permission to use somebody else's body? Well, if it's a negative right, then there is no obligation to use someone else's body. In order to use someone else's body, you have to have permission to use someone else's body. So in the context of the abortion debate, you have to have permission to use someone else's kidney or blood. I mean, it would be really nice for Chris Helmsworth to fly from Hollywood to your house to touch his cool hand to your brow, but he's not required. There's no obligation there because of this permission idea that to use somebody else's body, you have to have permission to use their body. In the context of the abortion debate, Thompson says that the fetus doesn't have the right to use the mother's body. The fetus's right to life doesn't automatically give it the right to use the mother's body. Just like your right to life doesn't automatically give you the right to use the other person's kidney. On the contrary, the mother must give the fetus permission. So the, the general objection to this line of argument, so far Thompson has argued that the right to life doesn't give you the right to use somebody else's body. This results in the context of the abortion debate in that the mother must give the fetus permission. The typical kind of objection that people respond against this line of reasoning is that suppose a woman voluntarily engages in intercourse knowing that it could lead to pregnancy and does this voluntary action on her part give the fetus permission to use her body so in response to this kind of permission we could call this the permission thesis that a person a has the right to use something we'll call it x that belongs to person b some other person whenever person b is at least partially responsible for the presence of person A in X. So think about the way this is going to work in the, in the case of a, of a pregnancy. Person A would be the baby, has the right to use something, that's the, the mother's body. It belongs to the mother, as long as the mother is at least partially responsible for the presence of the baby inside of her. Okay, so this we, we can call the permission thesis. Is this true? Thompson gives a few objections to why she thinks that this thesis is false. The first one is burglar. So if we imagine you open your window on a nice day to bring some fresh air into your house and a burglar comes in through the window, you tell the burglar to leave and the burglar was like, no, there's this permission thesis that if you are partly responsible for my presence in your house, then you have to let me use your house. And we would say, well, this is ridiculous. Even though you are partly responsible for the presence of the burglar by keeping your window open, that doesn't mean the burglar has a right to be in your house. The second kind of objection that Thompson uses is a little bit more of a far-fetched one. You have to imagine human reproduction being very different than it is now. Instead of the normal way that reproduction happens, Suppose that there are these things called people seeds that float around. And suppose that you leave your window open, just like in the burglar case, and one of these people seeds, kind of like a, a dandelion, floats through your window and embeds itself in your couch. In this case, the people seed, once it embeds itself in your couch, grows into a, an adult human being. Does this mean that you are under obligation to allow the person who sprouts from the seed to stay in your house and you are obligated to care for it. Thompson thinks that, of course not, this is ridiculous. Just because you left your window open doesn't mean, and you are partly responsible for the presence of the people seed in your house, doesn't mean that you must allow the people seed to stay in your house. And we could take this even farther. We could think of both of these cases where you even take measures to keep the burglar and the people seed from entering your house and you put bars on your window and unfortunately the bars don't always keep the burglars and the people seeds out so in this situation you've done your best you have tried to secure your windows but the burglars and the people seeds still get in does that mean that the burglar or the person who sprouts from the people seed 
has a right to use your house and be inside of your house anytime that they want? Well, of course not. So Thompson thinks that the permission thesis is false. That just because you're partially responsible for the presence of someone in some situation doesn't mean that they have the right to stay there. And of course, this is supposed to be analogous to cases of abortion where a woman tries to prevent pregnancy and still becomes pregnant. So according to Thompson, the permission thesis is false. Just because you're partially responsible for the presence of the fetus doesn't mean that you must allow the, the fetus to stay. And the result of this is that according to Thompson, the pregnant woman must give permission to the fetus to use her body. And in cases where she has not given the fetus permission to use her body, then she is free to abort, that it is not morally wrong for her to abort, especially in cases where she has actively tried to prevent pregnancy. And so this is Thompson's argument. In the next video, I'm going to explain some of the common objections to Thompson's argument.